we go. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so we just kind of wanted to start off with, oh, these are our bios, by the Hello. way. Yeah. Hi, this is Ashley. There you go. Hey, show Rachel. Let's go back. I'm just learning this. This is yeah. great. We're going to start with who we are. Yeah, there we go. Um, so basically, when I had the idea of creating a better for you convenience store, I'm from the Midwest, Ashley's from the Midwest, and it was looking at what does that mean to be socially conscious, what does that mean to be better for you, and it was really looking at what are the pillars of the store do we want and did I want to have, and I didn't know who to call except the one person that I have that I ask all my nutrition, all of my health questions is Ashley. Um, and so it was just like sitting down with her and I remember the first call was like, Ashley, I'm going to open up a better for you convenience store. And she was like, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, you have to help me. <laughs> and so I thought that we would just take this time to kind of go through what that journey looked like in regards to how do you create a better for you socially conscious convenience store. So how many people here have ever eaten something, um, probably not this show, but that was healthy, but didn't taste good. Anybody? Yeah. So do you go back for it? No. How about anybody ever fallen in love with something that is absolutely delicious and good for you, but costs more than your kid's college? Maybe not more, but, or your kid's college food now costs more than, you know, on that part. So I think we're at this intersection of time of knowledge about what is better for us. There's still a lot of confusion on that part. But what we're finding is it's not necessarily that easy to make those better for you choices. And um, at the Better Nutrition Program, what I've been investing in is making sure that you and your practitioner know what is going in and on your body more often. It's kind of like turning on your location settings before you can use Uber or Lyft, because you gotta know where you are in order to know where you wanna go. So things like CBD or things like uh, you know cereals or um, when you're putting grabbing a, a cleaner for your home or a you know, cleaner for your body, all of those different ingredients, we need to know what's going on our body most often, but so does your healthcare practitioner. And so our tools are for practitioners and patients to be on the same page and then be able to personalize your nutrition on that part. So that's really exciting and that happens in the doctor's office. But what happens when you actually go into the grocery store? And what Rachel presented me with was, imagine if you walked into 7-Eleven and suddenly you could just feel good about what was in there and also most people could feel like it was affordable. So one of my favorite things is uh, that we went through every single space. And, and when we first had the conversation, she said to me, well, does everything have to be organic? Or I think you said actually differently, it's not going to be organic, right? Yeah, because part of it was talking about the organic, non-organic, but a better for you. Because most people, when you look at organic, it does cost more. And in order to be accessible, does everything in a store need to be organic if you're trying to be a better for you um, store? And that was one of the questions that I posed to Ashley. And I'm like, you know, how do we contain and how do we keep the level of quality high while still making it accessible and affordable? Um, and that's kind of like what we dove in where for me, like Ashley sat down and she was just like, what are your non-negotiables? And I was just like, okay, it's no artificial like colors, no artificial dyes. Like I don't want red dye number 12. I, I don't know if that exists. It probably does. But like, I don't want none of the ingredients that you really don't understand where it comes from, from the source. Um, and that was like the biggest part. It was just like, okay, no artificial flavors, no preservatives. And then it was going through a list of everything. And it was talking about GMOs where it was one of those blanket statements where not all GMOs are bad, but a lot of GMOs are bad. So how do you have a store that you're able to say, we have some GMOs, but these ones are bad. So it was putting that overall arching pillar where we have no GMOs within the store. And I think that was a topic that you really helped me with. Yeah, so organic may not be healthy, right? We've all seen junk for, junky organic products, but in the non-GMO space, anybody here familiar with glyphosate-free residue testing, the, the certification that's now showing up? So I was having a conversation earlier, you know, especially if you're in the oat space, right? Oat milk, oat ice cream, oat everything right now. Um, there's a lot of information about they're testing the oat milk products and finding or, or uh, oat cereals and oat bars, that these are higher in the glyphosate. So glyphosate residue, how much is okay for our bodies? Well, we have no idea. But if you're a growing body, i.e. a child, or you're growing a body pregnant, if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease or cancer, then as a practitioner, I want to try to be able to direct you to the things that hopefully are just going to be a little bit easier for your body uh, to, to recognize and to deal with. So one of the things that we paid attention to is glyphosate residue. 
Well, some organic or certainly just some conventional products may have glyphosate residue levels that are higher, whereas a non-GMO product might not have that part. And so it starts to get super confusing, super fast for the, um, the actual consumer coming in. So the thing that we did is we just took the approach of better, not perfect, which is when I talk to people about your health, I'll say if you make more better, not perfect choices more often, you're, it's going to, that's gonna be where we get better health. There is no perfect health. So shooting for perfect is um, shooting for something that actually will never uh, work for you. So how do we make those better choices? And I loved um, what the conversation about Dig In. One, actually, one of the early products that uh, Rachel and I collaborated on was broccoli leaves. So I'm super excited, like cauliflower leaves, super nutritious, broccoli leaves, really nutritious for you. But one of the other things that we wanted to focus on is I can't feel awesome about a product being better for me if the person that's growing it is getting unhealthy by, or if we're taking away something from their community that is a part, a staple from them from a health standpoint. So one of the pieces that we really dove into is is there a win is there a space where we can create a kind of better for everybody better for the planet better for the people growing it and then also better for us uh, the consumers and then still having it be a win for her business so one of the things that we realized is that's never going to be the same thing year on year so as you start to think about if you're a retailer and you're thinking about what categories or what are you bringing into your store or if you're a, a restaurant or you're fast casual i always challenge people and one of the things i said to rachel about this as an advisor was don't make static um, don't set static parameters on what your list is allow it to evolve because as something evolves like today i went over and i saw those new rind snacks which you have at the goods march i was really excited about so suddenly we have these fruit snacks that, and I don't work with them, I just love tasting them. They don't have sulfur, they don't have uh, added sugar on it, and you're eating the peel. Well, we know that in between the peel, not only is there less food waste, um, but also between the peel and the fruit, they're getting in a little bit more nutrients. So now I'm kind of excited. So now that set the standard in a little bit of a different way for when we start to look at packaged uh, fruits and you know vegetable snacks. So you really don't want to um, ever communicate that your sourcing is something that is going to be dynamic dynamic that we excuse me that it's static it's, we want to think a little bit more about how it's going to be dynamic in that way yeah because I think that's like the evolution of the store and the store we opened up our first store April of last year so it's only been pretty much a year and a half and even the growth from a year and a half till now of just not only the products that we carry but also what we're learning about ingredients it's just shapes and evolves and I think that's over time is like the best way that is Ashley said and it kind of is like the lingo that we live by is being better not perfect where we also in our store we have no single serve plastic bottles but then we may have plastic where it's in a yogurt cup or a 64 ounce bottle of family style orange juice because from that standpoint it's just like if I got a glass container of 64 ounces of orange juice it's going to cost so much more that a family may not purchase that so it's also to be accessible and so i think that's like the biggest rule for us was creating a store that you always feel better about yourself when you walk out of whether that is saving money or a friendly face or just finding really something that's tasty that fits your, fits your health purposes and i think that's like the overall arching you know conversation to have always is how do we always improve and be better and don't beat yourself up if it's not 100% perfect right away. I think another one was we weren't looking to create a new third party logo. So this isn't like now it's Good Smart approved, right? And I, like, I, I so appreciate that space of people wanting to say like, hey, we've gone and we've looked into this and now we approve it. But consumer exhaustion and you know i use the term infobesity we are just fat on information and you know there some fat is great for us and like it's really good and we need that part but our info loads are so high right now and when you ask somebody to start to come to take in more information about what something is free from um, we're just seeing decision fatigue and we're not really making great choices about what it's full of nutritionally right so what we wanted to do in the Goods Mart was basically just say in each of these categories, can somebody who is walking out the door know that they are making a choice that is going to be better for their body, again, better for uh, the people that are growing it or harvesting it or developing it, and then also trying to be better for the planet. Um, and that's been really fun for us. Uh, one of the funny things too is we'll taste things. Like we have such different, I think all of us who are on that sort of the tasting scene will like in terms of tasting and how do you, do you like the taste of something? 
And that's a really important piece too, is just to recognize that something better be delicious, but it's gotta be delicious to each one of you. And that there's so much diversity, you know, in what is delicious. So that variety of flavors, you know, not having everything be, um, so we don't have, uh, we didn't sit down and say 60% of the store needs to have kale, right? Or today 25 for, you know, 80% has to have cauliflower, right? It's, we're not really looking so much at, at specific nutrient trends or specific flavors. Of course, there's a nod to them, but it's also really that that diversity um, of flavor and also one of the things that Rachel's done such an incredible job about is then making this a hub like so your convenience store is about your community and when you understand like in Silver Lake the difference between that versus um, in sort of the the uh, Soho area in um, uh, in New York City very very different uh, communities and how can you actually be um, you know, a key piece of that community. So talk a little bit about some of what you're doing on the, the community involvement. Yeah, and I think that's the fun part. It's understanding who your customer is and how can you engage them at all times. And I think what we talked about earlier today was food is always that place that you sit around a coffee or you sit around a dinner table and it's a place that you normally have a human touch to it. And I think that's where the food is too. Um, but within our stores, we donate all of our tips because you normally don't tip at a convenience store, but we leave that tip factor on, but make it 2% of your bill. So say you get a dollar twenty-five drip coffee, you get a fifty cent apple, that's two dollars, and you tip two percent on that. But at the end of the month, we add that up and we're like, hey, the goods mart, all of you, by doing two percent of your bill, we raised eight hundred dollars for a local nonprofit. We then also do an engaged like a litter league within like our Silver Lakes location. So on every it's like once a month on a Sunday, we pick up litter in the area as a community and everyone meets at the store, we have coffee, and then we hit the road and pick up trash. Um, and it's fun things like that. We do block parties, but then we also engage the products in our store by have them do sampling. And so we have 200 people that come through our block party and it's free samples, it's music, it's sitting with your neighbors and just having a conversation. So I think that's also part of when we look at food of food is community, a convenience store should be your community store and that's where people are coming to always for food. So why not make it a hub for that? I love it because I also, um, for those of you that are involved in the convenience space, so the National Association of Convenience Stores, NACS, like, I've just been, it's been awesome to see just sort of this trend, but you know, there's a lot of pushback, right, for how convenient can you make a convenience store, and the Good Smart is just proving that this is what our, it's doable and it's winnable for everyone uh, throughout the cycle, and so I think what we're starting to see now is that traction, oh, you know, so many of you uh, who are involved on the product side are, when you create a product, the ripple effect is you're helping to teach people what is now possible today uh, and I think that that your idea just and moving into this space um, has just been so exciting on that part thank you and just uh, these are the pillars that we live by for mm -hmm. the better for you side of it mm -hmm. um, just super it's simple but to us they mean everything and we have things like homeopathic remedies. So the other idea is it has to work, right? So when you get over into the sundry side, you can't say to someone, okay, we're not gonna sell like a pain reliever, uh, like a over-the-counter medication, but we're gonna sell a homeopathic. But then if it doesn't work in the moment, uh, then that's not, so it's, it's also about something has to work. And so one of my thing, one of the reasons that I chose uh, and we focus on our homeopathic side is those are things that can work immediately, um, but also don't interact typically with medication. So where it's an easy thing for us to say to somebody, hey, this is a good thing for you to try from a preventative health standpoint or in that moment that you're running into the convenience store going, oh my gosh, you know, I need something. So yeah. I think the sundry side has a whole list of uh, things that we were considering as well. Yeah. And this is just a photo of our LA store. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see it's bright and bold, but inside is very white and the product jumps off the shelves. Um, and then this one is around 850 square feet. So it's still small, but wait till you see this lovely one. This is our Soho location. So this is just on Lafayette between Broom and Grand in the city. Um, this little guy is our small and mighty store, we like to say. Um, it's 400 square feet. So it's basically the size of this stage. Or my first apartment in Manhattan. But you've Basically. done a much better job, I think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can see we have quite a bit inside of here. Um, the middle council area that you see um, on the top center photo, that's a Lazy Susan. So for part of the design also is making it fun. Um, and so that's, you know, that's more of the goods.